Hey there, my name is Kaylee, and in this lesson, we will learn about Newton's second law. It will be helpful that you've already completed the module called Newton's first law. Do you recall Newton's first law? We simplified it to say, objects in motion stay in motion and objects at rest stay at rest unless acted on by an unbalanced force. Do you remember what happens when an object experiences an unbalanced force? That's right, they'll have a change in speed or direction. And this means that there will be a change in velocity. And we define a change in velocity as acceleration. Now there's a very special relationship between an object's mass, force, and acceleration. It goes like this. The force applied to an object is equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration of the object. And this relationship is what Sir Isaac Newton declared as his second law of physics. He said, the net force acting on an object is equal to that object's mass times its acceleration. So the force is the magnitude of the unbalanced force acting on the object. The mass is the objects in kilogram. And the acceleration is how fast the object is changing its velocity. So we often write this in shorthand as F equals MA. And it's really convenient to rewrite this equation for acceleration where we say A is equal to F over M, or the acceleration is equal to force over mass. At this point in this lesson, it's gonna be really helpful if you already have a good understanding of fractions and multiplication with fractions at this point. So let's dig into what these expressions really mean in the real world. If I have two carts with the same mass, and I pull one cart with a big force and one with a small force, what do you think will be different about their accelerations? We can use the expression solving for acceleration of A equals F over M to think this through. So if the mass is the same for both carts, but one has a big force and the other has a small force, we expect the cart with the larger force, the top cart, to have a larger acceleration but we can use some numbers to deepen our understanding. So let's say we have two carts and they each have a mass of two kilograms. And I'm gonna pull the top cart with a force of six newtons and the bottom cart with only a force of four newtons. So which one will have a faster acceleration? We can plug these number into the expression for acceleration, so it goes for the top one, acceleration is equal to six newtons, the force, divided by two kilograms, the mass. And for the bottom cart, acceleration is equal to a force of four newtons divided by the same mass of two kilograms. So if I solve for this, the top cart will have an acceleration of three meters per second, and the bottom cart will have an acceleration of two meters per second. So this helps us to understand that when two objects have the same mass, the object with the larger force will have a faster acceleration. But what about carts with different masses? So now I'm gonna have two carts with different masses and I'm going to pull them with the same force. So what do you think will be different about the accelerations in this example? We can still use the expression for acceleration is equal to force over mass to think this through. So if they have the same force pulling on them, the heavier cart will accelerate slower than the lighter cart. But we can plug some numbers in to help us understand. So I'm gonna have my top cart is four kilograms and my bottom cart is two kilograms and they're both being pulled with a force of eight newtons. So when I plug those numbers in for the top cart, I get acceleration is equal to eight newtons over four kilograms. And the bottom cart acceleration is equal to eight newtons over two kilograms. So if I do the math for these, I'm gonna see the top cart has an acceleration of two meters per second, and the lighter cart is gonna have an acceleration of four meters per second. 
So we can see when the same force is applied to two objects with different mass, the object with the lighter mass will accelerate faster than the heavier object. So now what happens if I have two objects with the same acceleration but different masses? So I know that the acceleration is going to be the same, so they are changing their velocity at the same rate. But what will be different about the forces they are experiencing? So we can use the expression F equals MA to help us understand this. So the cart with a larger mass and the same acceleration will require a larger force to pull it. But we can plug in some numbers. So let's say the top cart is three kilograms, the bottom cart is two kilograms, and they both have an acceleration of three meters per second. So I'm gonna plug these numbers in for the top cart, three kilograms times three meters per second squared. And for the bottom cart, the force is two kilograms times three meters per second squared. So if I complete the math on that, it looks like my top cart is gonna be requiring a force of nine newtons and the lighter cart is gonna require a force of six newtons. So now we can see that a cart with a larger mass will need to have a larger force applied to it to move with the same acceleration as a lighter cart. So cool, that's pretty much the gist of Newton's second law. So now let's play a game together so you can watch me play and then you will be able to play on your own. All right, so here we are in the motion and uh, forces in motion basics game for acceleration. Uh, so first things first, I'm going to click on the acceleration and the speed. Um, for right now, we'll just stick with that just so we can kind of get a hang of what's going on. So in this one, we have a friction slider here. So by sliding it more towards lots, that means there's more friction. Towards none, there's no, no uh, lesser friction. None, it becomes ice, so there's nothing. Um, for right now, let's just keep it right in the middle so we can kind of play around. I'm gonna put the girl up here. And now since there is some friction, it's going to initially take some applied force to overcome that friction force. And then eventually, once my forces are unbalanced, we should see our speed increase and we should see acceleration because as we learned, applied force is equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration. So let's see what happens. I'm just gonna use my slide bar and we should see the forces. So applied force and friction force are balanced. The, the arrows look the same. So still balanced, still balanced, no acceleration. Let's see, and I'm starting to overcome that friction force and you see immediately the speed is going up. The acceleration has kicked in. I'm at 248 Newtons. So if we increase this, what should we see with the acceleration? If my force is increasing and my mass is staying the same, I'm going to see an increase in acceleration. Nice, so I'm gonna let that go. So now we see the acceleration is negative. The only force is the friction force. So negative right now just means going to the left, just means the opposite direction of the direction of motion, which we set as right initially. Nice. And now it's all coming to zero because the friction force has balanced out to nothing. Perfect. So let's see um, what happens now if I increase this friction force. So now there's closer to lots. Do you think it's going to take more force to overcome this friction force? And do you think the acceleration is going to be less? Or do you think it will be the same, given that her mass is the same? So this is kind of a, a tricky one. So when my friction force increases, as we'll see, I'm going to apply my force, and it's going to take more applied force to get her to move initially. Remember, at 2.48, we were already moving. We're still not moving. We're still not moving. And now we're starting at 3.75, we started to move. Our acceleration is going, our speed is increasing. I'm gonna keep increasing my applied force. So my net force is getting bigger. My unbalanced force is getting bigger. 
I'm going to max it out at 500 newtons. My acceleration is steady and my speed is hitting max speed. So then when my force goes back to zero, again, only the friction force is acting, acceleration is going towards the left, and my speed is going to decrease to zero. Awesome. So now if I put this at none, I'm going to put some values on here. So now we'll see how fast um, our speed is and what our acceleration is. And let's put the man up there. My friction is closer to none, so there should be less friction. And um, masses, let's see. So he's 80 kilograms. The box is 50 kilograms. Let's see what happens. So there we saw our friction force and our applied force are now not balanced. So I'm going to have a small acceleration. So my acceleration is 0.35 meters per second squared. And you'll see my acceleration is constant, but that means that my speed is increasing. So now if I'm going to increase this applied force, what's going to happen? My acceleration is increasing. So as I increase the force, the acceleration increases. And why is that? because my mass is constant, and F equals MA. So if M is never changing, but my force is increasing, then my acceleration needs to increase. Nice work. And we'll see it come all the way. My speed is decreasing because I have a friction force. So I'm gonna come all the way back down to zero. And let's just reset this here. So I'm clicking my acceleration on, my speed on, my values, my masses, so we know everything. So now I want you to make a prediction. If this box weighs 50 kilograms, and this box also weighs 50 kilograms down here, and the girl here weighs 40 kilograms, and I'm gonna keep my friction the same, do you think when I apply 500 newtons, so I'm applying a force of 500 newtons, my friction force stays the same, so that means my net force will be the same. Do you think the acceleration of the girl or the acceleration of this box will be more? So remember, the mass here is going to be heavier because 50 plus 50 is going to be 100. Here with 40 and 50 will only be 90. So this combo will have less mass. Do you think with the same force, the acceleration will be greater for the boxes or the box and the girl? Let's do an experiment. Let's start with the box. I'm putting him up there. So we got 100 total mass here. And I'm going to take my uh, applied force all the way to the 500 here. And let's see what happens. All the way to 500. Look at my acceleration is constant here. 3.12 meters per second squared. Do you remember that? 3.12 for the box. Let's reset it. 3.12 for the box. Let's see what happens. I'm putting the girl up there. So now I have 90 kilograms total mass here. I'm going to apply the same amount of force. And will my acceleration be faster than 3.12 or slower than 3.12? Make your prediction in your head. And I'm sliding it over to 500. And my acceleration is 3.6 eight meters per second squared. So that's greater than it was for the box. And we know we were able to predict that hopefully, right? That uh, the girl, since she has less mass, this total mass is less. And objects with lighter mass with the same force applied will have a higher acceleration. Great job. So now it's your turn to play this game on your own. So you can check out the practice problems and uh, feel free to play around with the simulation on your own for about five or 10 minutes before you try those practice problems to really get a hang of what the slider and all the buttons and everything means. So have fun and remember, always be clever. Hey, hey.